Outlander. Okay, you guys might be thinking, hey, what do you have to do but sit home and be quarantined? So why are you not just making videos? Well, my birthday just happened. So since I couldn't have one big party, I've had to have multiple mini get-togethers. And uh, that's why there's, there's some corona in the back and my room looks not much worse than it normally does, actually. It usually looks pretty bad, but it's messy. <laughs> So I've been doing a lot of little things, little birthday things, so I'm a little behind, I know. My mom called me and said she really liked this episode and it made her that much more sad that the uh, Outlander Paley Fest was cancelled, which we were supposed to be going to. Um, so, apparently it's a good one. This is Season 5, Episode 5 of Outlander. Its title is Perpetual Adoration. Let's do it. Old Timey Claire. I mean, more different old timey. Did you get it? Did you get the penicillin? You reading romance novels? Girl, you don't need to read them. You lived it. Because nothing can stand against time. Not mountains, not armies. Oh. Give anything enough time, oh, the flashbacks taken care of. And if time is anything akin to God, I suppose that memory must be the devil. That was deep, yo. Get an allergic reaction to penicillin. Oh, dang. I guess you never really know what's coming, do you? No, you don't. That sounds like horrible foreshadowing. That's not a bad idea, actually. So your mom can't make penicillin, but he can make his own university? You've come to violate the king's peace. There's a brigade of redcoats at hand, ready to give you a sound thrashing. That guy's so brave. Captain, let them drink until the barrel runs dry. Quit stabbing your knife into stuff. This is a nice building. As you know, I did something excessive in the jail. Murder? Yeah, I saw. I petitioned the magistrate for the prisoner roles at Ardsmuir. Oh, God, no. Fitzgibbons was once in Castle. Oh. Have a girl. Oh, no. Just tell him you don't want to do it because you don't want to mess up their walls. Surgery to remove the gallbladder. I had that. It ain't nothing. Well, now it might be awful then. I'll have Nurse Jeffries run some preliminary tests for allergies and such. Oh no! I don't suppose there are any other options. You're the guy. Oh god, you gotta take them tonsils out. No. This episode's all about gallbladders and tonsils. I've had both of those taken out. It's awful. Actually, gallbladder was fine. Tonsils was the worst. Right, Kezzy. Drop your britches. He's like, it's my throat that is sore. With ladies present and all. Lizzie, keep the lantern close by. I can't, I'm too nervous with all this. Open wide. Mm. Mm -mm. I'm going to work quickly, but you need to keep very still. Mm -mm. <laughs> Just as you practiced. Scout. Nah, nah. Ah, oh, no. I don't want to think about it. Oh God! Stop Get everything! The depressed. I can't with this. There. Head up. Oh, okay. Pull that in there. We're gonna be all right. We're and gonna be okay. Have to cauterize the tissue. Oh no. Steady. This can be the tricky part. That was the, tr the, tr the tricky part. Hasn't happened yet. Done. You're just in one side. Lizzie, you can open your eyes now. Oh. Holy mother of God. I feel you, Lizzie. What'd you knock over? You gonna find that little gym? Yep, there it is. Perhaps you'll be more satisfied with my pearls of wisdom. You just, he's cheating and you're not even looking. He didn't even do that subtly. Did you not play the Ace of Hearts in the last time? Ha, ha. Gotcha. It must have been the Ace of Diamonds. Oh, come on. Fight him. Because I told him Jemmy was his. Oh, awkward. He was gonna die, and I thought that it would be of comfort for him <sighs> to know there'd be something of his left in this world. Oh, skin deep. Oh, my cat's having a dream on my arm. Wake up, buddy. There we go. You okay? Someone's in the bushes. Who's in the bushes? I probably would have missed you, but still. <laughs> for Bree's sake. But to make it work, you had to lie to Brianna for most of her life about her real father. 
So there's some parallels. There's something else. What else? What you got? Stephen Bonnet is still alive. Oh, oh, that. I knew that. He didn't, though. Look at his face. What? There we go. And he... Because as soon as we know if Jimmy can travel, we'll use Bonnet's gem to leave. Yeah. We'll let, let that kid see what TV's like. A pardon for everyone, but Murta Fitzgibbons. Oh, that's not cool. Oh, I'm no standing. I'm no sheriff. No, but you are Scottish. It's That's basically the regulators. same thing. I'll be back on my feet by Friday at four o'clock. Mm. It's my perpetual adoration shift at St. Finbar's. I have. And I haven't missed a day since Olivia died. It's my way of keeping her close. This is hurting my heart. I'd Stop like it. Think it's her way. No, I'll get you started on a course of penicillin. No, don't do it. Is. He died. No. I liked him. Well, what happened? I thought I might find you here. Oh, Joe Abernathy. Missed you. Doctor, I let myself get attached to the patient. But he was awesome. Times. At the risk of sounding sentimental, had we gone to battle, there's no man I'd have rather had by my side. You got a crush on him? It's okay, many people do. Excuse me. Oh, uh, what's happening? Thank you. Is it the prison list? Is that the document you're expecting from Scotland? Ooh. Mm. The transcript of the Ardsmuir prison roll after Culloden. It's gonna go down! And you'll find my name on that prison roll. Oh, he just get, get out in front of it. Oh, it is written here that Fitzgibbons has the surname Fraser. Ooh, it's coming together, honey. My godfather, but Martha Fitzgibbons Fraser is a good man. Oof. You will do me the oh. service of standing down. Now we can start fighting. I call for your arrest. Oh, what's happening? Thurston, I believed you were a good man. Which of us is it then? Can it be both? <laughs> or neither? Which of us is righteous? There are none who are righteous. Nox. You just donked his head on the wall. Just go sleepy time. Just sleepy time. Does that even kill him? He probably just went sleepy. That can happen. Close his eyes. It's weirding me out. Thanks, bro. Oh, shoot. You closed the flu. It's like Assassin's Creed. Run on the rooftop. It is like Assassin's Creed. Pet the cat. He died of that smoke inhalation that also bruises your neck. Don't read too deep into it. Found him. You got a kitty! In an alley. Hunting for his mother's milk. Remember they did that Yule log thing and they showed a kitten in it? It's that cat? He's perfect. He's he's dreamy and he gives you kittens. And I do have many questions. But I won't ask about the nature of time. I've lived it. Oh, that's awesome and deep, yo. I dug this episode. It's what it was a very like chill content wise, but a lot of cool stuff happens in it episode. I love the thread of this dude who died and you realize that he was kind of the spark and the crux of made making them my cat's purring into my microphone flashbacks but you realize he's kind of what was the crux of making them all make the ch decision to go to london to find out about reverend wakefield to eventually finding jamie and it was cool because it was just seemingly only connected with penicillin but it was a very cool thing that sparks a lot of other stuff Basically, Claire's figured out penicillin, got that all sorted out. Then we have a flashback where Claire is meeting with Bree and tells her that she just lost a patient who was allergic to penicillin and they should have caught it, but there was a weird percentage that they might not catch it, and he was one of them, and he died. Jamie and the militia roll up into a town, and Lieutenant, or Lieutenant Knox, is at this place, and he says that Gra Governor Tryon is saying that he'll have pardons for everyone basically except for Murtaugh hoping that it will kind of like get people to give Murtaugh up and kind of quiet everything down then they go back into flashbacks of Claire interacting with her patient and you kind of fall in love with him because he's a really cool sweet Scott dude who's fun and you're like okay well now I know you're dying so I'm sad and I'm gonna be sad every time you show him he basically just had a pretty mild infection and needed his gallbladder out and it wasn't gonna be something that killed him but penicillin's a heck of a thing then we see a disgusting scene of Claire cutting the tonsils out of the two twins, and I was not here for that. 
And then we see Roger's at home with the baby, and when he's trying to comfort the baby, he ends up knocking over this jewelry box, and he finds the gem that belonged to Bonnet, and he's like, okay, I have questions now. Why does Brie have this? He questions Brie, and she tells him that she actually did see Bonnet and speak to him before she went to go see him get hanged, and he gave it to her, and he's like, well, why would he give it to you? And she tells him that she had told Bonnet that the baby was his to try and, in a weird way, comfort him, and uh, that's why... She, he ended up giving her the gym, and he's like, wait, so do you really think the baby's bonnets? And she's like, I don't know. And then they have a fight. Then we get another flashback with Claire, and she is at a church, and she's talking to a priest about the dude who died and how he reminded her of someone else and how she kind of needed reminding that if you still remember someone, they're not gone. And you can see the wheels turning of her being like, I'm gonna go, I want to go be close to Jamie. <laughs> then we go back to Roger, and he's out hunting and he runs into Claire, and she's like, why did you stay out here all night? She realizes that Roger and Brie are having a fight. And then they have a cool heart-to-heart -heart talking about how um, to, to make things good for Brie as a child, they did have to lie to her the whole time about who her father was. But they made things work for the baby, and they have this cool moment talking about this. Roger goes and talks to Brie, and they kind of make up, but then Brie also reveals that Bonnet's alive, and he's all freaking out. But he's like, no. Once we know that the baby can travel through the stones, we'll just take that little gem from Bonnet and get out of here. Then we have a couple more flashbacks, I think, with Claire and the dude who she's preparing for surgery, and he says that he wants to get out of there in time to go to church. And so it's more things that's kind of reminding Claire of Jamie and Scotland and all this stuff. And then we have the flashback where Claire finds out that he died, and she's really all sad about it. Then there's a scene with uh, Abernathy, and she's kind of mentioning how she's feeling like something's pointing her in a certain direction, even if it sounds weird. She feels like there's something she should be doing, and so you see more of the wheels turning that she wants to go back at least close to where she thinks Jamie's dead. Then we have a cool scene where Jamie goes to talk to Lieutenant Knox, and basically Jamie has to turn over all of the militia names, and while Jamie's there, Knox gets a delivery, and it's all of the prisoner manifest from back at the prison that he knows his name's gonna be on. So before the dude can even read it, Jamie's just like, hey, by the way, my name's on that list, and Murtaugh's my godfather, and I'm not gonna let you hunt down my godfather. They trade some stuff back and forth talking about the meaning of what being honorable is, and then, of course, Jamie has to straight up kill the dude. Jamie chokes him out, and then closes the flu, and puts the dude in bed, tucks him in to make it look like the dude got smoke inhalation, and then he just bolts, but on his way out, he takes a kitten, because it don't matter what you did, if you were just a murder, it don't matter. You see a kitten, you take the kitten. We see the rest of the very first flashback, which I think is cool, because throughout the whole episode, each time we cut back to Claire and Brie, it's basically from them meeting, walking downstairs, and doing a short walk. But each part of the conversation is what we flash back to, and then you get the resolution that that guy dying is why Claire wanted to take Brie to London and what kickstarted the whole thing. And then we see it back in present, future, past, present, um, is when Claire is, tells him about the guy that died. She tells Jamie about him and says she owes him a lot because his death kicked off all of these chain of events. And then we end back on a flashback of Claire at the church with a cool voiceover talking about one day when she meets God, she'll ask him about all the questions she had, but she won't ask about time because she's lived time. And then credits. So this is a cool one. This thing kind of hit the heart more. It was a cool, like, character development type episode that I really liked. Anyway, that's all I got. I want to get this edited and out as quickly as possible. So if I forgot anything, left anything out, if you guys want to talk about anything, drop a comment. Don't forget to do things. Rate, comment, subscribe. I will catch you guys later. Until next time.